This started as an absolute bottom of the barrel rebuild, but as things do, it spiraled a little bit and ended up with more parts than I originally planned for. But I think it is still very, very much a budget engine build. Okay, let's start with the first thing I bought. This is the engine rebuild kit. This comes with gaskets, seals, piston rings, crank bearings, and rod bearings. These are 30 over, these are 10 under, and these are 10 under. Next, a couple of you fought my stubborn cheapness, so I ended up buying a Gates water pump, a Melling M55 oil pump, and a steel pump drive shaft, which is really just for my peace of mind, but this did come with a new plastic bushing, so that probably would have done just fine even without the new drive shaft. We'll talk about that when we put the engine together. The rebuild set somehow didn't include these, so I ended up buying a pack of 100 valve stem seals. This is plenty in case I tear one or two trying to get everything together, and of course for future projects. I also ordered some new valve springs. Now, these are Z28 springs, which are a bit stronger, and we'll get to more on this in just a minute here, but I may or may not end up using these. And finally, half the comments on these videos are always camshaft, camshaft, camshaft. So, instead of doing that and appeasing the viewers, I got a very mild camshaft. This is what is traditionally at least called an RV grind, as in recreational vehicle. It has a bit more lift, a bit more duration, a little bit more of everything than stock, but should still have a smooth idle and should be right in the RPM range for the cylinder heads I'm gonna use. As a package set with the cam, of course, you need new lifters. It also came with a new timing chain. I was kind of hemming and hawing about using the old one, but I, I really shouldn't. I also just have this timing chain. I'll probably just use this chain instead of that whole set and save the set for something else. And I had this already, but I should mention it. This is a Dorman core plug set. I already put one of them in because it was leaking, but now this time we will put the rest of them in. Okay, now it's time to actually start cleaning something. Just gonna pull all the old bearings out, degrease the pistons and caps, and pull off all the old rings. For the caps, all I'm gonna do is wipe them off with a paper towel, and then give them a wipe with degreaser. The engine internals are all really clean on this thing. So, I'm not going to waste too much time on it all. Come back with some degreaser later on, but that's pretty much all I'm doing with them. Okay, now let's start with the pistons. I'm just going to take all the caps off, double check to make sure they're all marked correctly. This is a piston ring expander, piston ring installer. These are very cheap. It's one of those things. You just don't mess around with piston rings without getting one of these. They're so cheap, there's, there's no excuse. And it just makes it so easy. Like, don't even think about it guys, just get one of these. For the oil control rings, basically just gonna unhook it, spiral it off. Same way you're gonna install these later on. But uh, I'm gonna be a little less gentle this time. Just remember, these are steel, and this is aluminum, so you know, be at least a little bit careful with it all. And then the uh, corrugated ring has an end somewhere, I swear it does. There we go, and I'll spiral it the same way. Let's get these an initial degreasing, and then I'll take a better look at them. Now something in the car cleaner works great, but for just a general degreasing, this is just Purple power and a little bit of water. Just gonna take our old piston and soak it. And when you have it in this degreaser, what you're gonna wanna do is work that wrist pin around in the piston. You wanna make sure you can get, if there's anything in there that's sticking or stiff, make sure that loosens up. You do not want any extra friction in there. All the pistons out of this engine move very freely. Just let it soak in there a couple minutes. You can take wire brush. All the carbon and everything on these is, is pretty light. Again, remember, this is aluminum and this is steel, so, you know, just keep it in mind. If your pistons are really bad, you'll end up using a, a die grinder or something. And if you're gonna use a wire wheel or Scotch-Brite or Rolock or whatever on that thing, 
You gotta be real careful. You wanna take this gunk off, but leave the aluminum right where you found it. Back to scrubbing. Every time we take it out of there, it's gonna be a little bit cleaner. As far as degreasers go, I've had pretty much the same luck with all of them. I don't really have a preference. I just use whatever's cheap. And there we go. That is looking pretty good. I'm pretty sure YouTube's gonna yell at me if these aren't like actually good looking. Another note, I like these brushes from Harbor Freight for cleaning because they're pretty soft. Of course, they're also very cheap. They're pretty soft. The wooden handled ones, the welding ones, are very stiff. I would not use those for something like this because you could really mar that aluminum up. These guys, though, are soft enough and really, it's pretty safe here. If you have like a, a steam parts washer or something, these would be a really good use for that. Okay, just gonna dip it again. Then we'll take a paper towel, wipe it up. You can see already, it's much, much better. That was maybe five minutes. Let's see how big a difference that makes. And the rest of this is pretty much, this can be more of the same. Brushing stuff like this, you wanna keep switching directions. That way the dirt will never know where it's coming from. Okay, that is looking very good. Now how about the ring grooves? They are still looking pretty nasty. There are tools and some specific stuff you can get to clean them. But uh, what do you have right here? But a nice sharp edge and a perfect fit for those ring grooves. All you're gonna do, these are cast iron. I, I'm gonna go ahead and say, probably don't try this with the steel ones. Press against it. There you go. Of course, be careful, these are very sharp. So I'm just gonna take that and use it as a scraper down in the ring groove. And just like with the other steps, remember that this is iron. This is aluminum. So keep that in mind. Try not to scratch anything or remove any material you do not want to. Yeah, these are pretty nasty. I see there's already there's a big glob. I should point out, you wanna use the uh, pre-made end for this. You don't want to use the correct end because it might not be completely straight. Just keep working it all the way around and once you feel like you can get it all the way around smoothly, go ahead and dunk it back in the degreaser. Again, you're just going to run it all the way through, all the way around until it feels pretty smooth the whole way around. Just kind of fold up a paper towel, put that in there. And now you can use your eyeballs visually verify how it's going. Once you're pretty confident with it, you can duck it in degreaser, you can clean it out with a paper towel again, but don't forget, the piston like this is gonna have two compression rings and the oil rings. So for the oil control rings, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to use this right down in the corners. Working all the way around, just like with the compression rings, but it's pretty good. Now, i got to get a second compression ring groove. I should also note, check out your rings. Some will have a, uh, a chamfer on one side or a little corner cut out, stuff like that. And if you do have something like that on your the ring you're using for cleaning, you're going to need to run that both directions to make sure you get both corners with your nice sharp corner. How much is coming out of there so easily? If you have something really stubborn, you can go to your card cleaner warm up your degrease or something like that. You wanna just keep running this paper towel through these grooves until it comes out clean. Once, it looks pretty good. You can kinda hold it up against something white like this paper towel and rotate it. So cleaning your ring grooves like this isn't necessarily the best or the perfect way to do this. There are tools specifically made for this. And a lot of people just tell you to soak the pistons in, in diesel or kerosene or something like that, or carb cleaner. And that'll break everything up enough that you don't need such a harsh method. But hot rodders have done it this way for decades. Other than just scratching up the bottom of the groove, the danger is that the piston rings will be more square than the actual grooves will be. These will have kind of a, a beveled bottom edge, and you could be scraping those bevels out of there. And there's two dangers there. One, that bevel strengthens the whole thing, so in a crazy catastrophic situation, you could uh, 
below the whole top of the piston off or something like that. And if you weaken or cut out those bevels, it'll also reduce the sealing ability of the rings. Because what's making your rings seal is the compression gas is getting in behind them and pushing them out against the cylinder walls. And maybe if those bevels aren't just right, it'll not seal as well, something like that. But I'm not even remotely worried about any of that being a problem. I just think I should point it out. Again, this is one of those, this is what I'm doing, not what is the best to do kind of situations. And that's pretty much it. This is pretty much ready to go. Just needs another, you know, wipe off another wash and it's ready to go. Once you've got the film wiped off and really before you do all that cleaning, you want to look real close at the edges of the piston, especially right along the skirt here. If you see really slight scratches just like that, that's perfectly fine. You do not want to see scuffing or anything. I can still feel machining marks all the way up the edges, all the way around the lands. These pistons are still in very good shape. Make sure it doesn't have any wobble to it. Make sure it's really solid in there. This is fine, this is as it should be, but you do not want any wiggle anywhere but there. This feels perfect. Dunk it in any greaser, take some paper towels, whatever, wipe out as much as I can, compressed air, blow it out, my usual stuff. Then set it aside somewhere clean, or it's not gonna get dirty again, and you're good to go. The catch is, this is only one piston. There's seven more to go. As you're cleaning everything and prepping for reassembly, you wanna make sure the caps fit on real straight. You wanna make sure everything is not bent or moved or gotten too hot or anything like that. And you wanna make sure the nuts thread on smooth and easy. This one does not. So let's take a close look at why. You can see right there that thread second to the top has a little kink in it. Sometimes you can just thread a nut back on and everything will straighten out. But let me show you my favorite solution to problems like this. This is what's called a thread file and it's exactly what it sounds like. It'll help you straighten them out, get rust off, do all kinds of stuff like that. So you're just gonna use the right part of the file for the threads you have. Just kind of slot it right in. Any resistance you feel is problems in the threads, so you can just go ahead and file with it until everything feels smooth. Like any kind of filing, you are making particles, so you're gonna to wanna to clean all this up really good before you put it back together. Now, after filing, if you look at that thread, all the material in the way has been removed. Okay, now let's just try putting the cap on again. Yep, there you go. No effort at all. Perfectly smooth. And just for a comparison, here is a dirty piston and a clean one. And finally, all the pistons are clean. So what about the oil pump pickup? This is a pretty specific one for the oil pan that's on there and I have everything adjusted just right on this oil pump and I don't really want to do that again. Before, I had just tack welded it onto the cast iron, but I read enough forum posts of people having them come off from that that I decided I want to do this a different way. If you look close, it's actually not engaged all the way either. I was having trouble and I figured the weld would be fine. So instead of welding steel to cast iron, we're gonna weld steel to steel and make a little tab that's gonna hook onto that bolt hole. 
That way we can keep this orientation and be sure that the pickup tube will never back out of the pump. This imperial bolt holds it down to the main caps and then metric bolts holding the actual oil pump together. You can see here this is actually an M55 also so this is exactly the same as the pump that's going to be replacing it. This one is just a little bit worn. It's really not bad though, all things considered. There's no major scores or terrible wear on this cap at all. It's still, it feels very smooth. I'll hang on to it. I'm just gonna clean this and tape it off so that I can't damage the surface. And I really don't think there's anything wrong if you do a nice good weld around here. And if you do, make sure you take out the pressure release spring so that you're not weakening it. So I have to compensate for it being a little farther in since this isn't all the way in. But other than that, that should go right together. And there we go. That is looking pretty good. Okay, now let's weld the tab on here. Try to keep it still and definitely try not to burn through anybody. And we'll just clean that up with some carb cleaner. For the love of God, don't use chlorinated brake cleaner. Okay, this is clamped together. I'm just gonna tack it around here and then fully weld it. I'm not too worried about the relief spring this time since I'm not welding to the cast iron. It's a big enough heat sink, it'll be fine. For once, I'm not gonna recommend Harbor Freight. These come from Advance Auto, and with coupons, you can usually get them for something like a dollar, two dollars. These are my vice grips of choice. That's just about as low as this welder will go. It's not burning through, it seems just about right. I like overkill, in case you haven't noticed before. This tab coming off is never gonna be something I need to worry about. I'll clean it up a little bit and then try to break these welds and get the pickup back out of the housing. This ain't exactly a surgical tool. Let's try something else. They're pretty good. It took a fair amount of force. I really think if you fully welded it, it would be totally fine. 